Hey guys, this is Shane and I'm back with another video and in this one we're going to be checking out the Galaxy A22 5G. This is another budget-oriented 5G-capable smartphone from Samsung. The price at the time of this video is around $300 or so, which is what I personally paid for this phone. This phone comes packed with 6 gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage, and it also comes in four different colors. We have this gray color here, we have white, mint, and also violet. I am super excited to check this phone out with you guys because even though this is a lower number on the Galaxy A series spectrum, it's still packing a lot of good features that I'm very excited to check out. So let's go ahead, jump right into the box of this A22. In the box here, we have a pamphlet on the top. We just have a quick start guide, pretty standard stuff here. On the top, we have our phone. Put that to the side for just a second here. See what else we get in the box. We also have a type C to type A charging cable. We get a 15 watt fast charger in the box, which is great that we have a charger included and it's also a fast charger. Love to see that. Inside the box, we have our SIM ejection tool. We'll check out that SIM tray later, see what it's got inside for us. And inside this little box here, it looks like there should be some earbuds or something, but there's just nothing included in the box. But with those things out of the way, let's go ahead and check out the main event, the A22 5G. First and foremost, one of the best things on this phone here, we have a 1080p 90 hertz refresh rate screen. I'm super excited to check out the screen of this phone. I love seeing that a better spec screen is coming to a lower Samsung A series phone. We have a triple camera setup on the back here. We'll definitely test out those cameras towards the end of the video if you're interested in that. And we also have a side fingerprint scanner, which I absolutely love. We'll jump into that more as well during the course of this video. But first impressions, wow, look at this design. This is a really cool design. So first impressions immediately out of the box. I'm really liking this look of this A-series phone. Last year, the Samsung A-series phones all looked pretty much identical, except for size and thickness for batteries and such. But we have some very different designs this year on all of the Samsung A-series phones. So just to give you guys a little example of what I'm talking about, this is the Galaxy A12, which it looks the most similar to that phone if you're looking at it from far away. Then we have our Galaxy A32 5G, then we have our Galaxy A42 5G, and this is the Galaxy A52 5G. So we have a ton of different designs, and I really like that Samsung is spicing things up this year with all these different designs. So your decision doesn't have to just be on a processor or on a certain spec on a spec sheet. You can choose a phone that is to your look and to your design that you prefer. But initially here, from a design standpoint, I'm really liking the look of this Galaxy A22 5G. This matte feel is quite nice. It's definitely gonna pick up fingerprints over time, but it has a nice grippy feel to it in the hand. Even though it's smooth, you might think it's slippery, but I can already feel here immediately that this is gonna be a great grip in the hand. So while we boot up the A22 5G, let's just do a quick tour of this phone. Starting on the right-hand side, here we have our volume rockers towards the top. And then in the middle, we have our fingerprint sensor. On the bottom, we have a headphone jack, we have a mic, have a type C port, again, 15 watt charging capable, and we have a single bottom firing speaker here. We'll also test out those speakers later on in the video. On the left side here, we have what appears to be our SIM tray, which upon closer inspection, we have a dual SIM setup here in addition to a micro SD card slot capable to up to one terabyte of additional storage. And this is just one of those little things that I love about these A series phones, getting that dual SIM and the dedicated micro SD card slot. You cannot find this on any of Samsung's higher end phones. And on the top here, we just have one mic, and then flipping back around to the back again for a second, we have that triple lens setup, and the camera bump really is not coming out of the phone all too much. But now let's take our first look at this 6.6 inch display. We have yet again another big screen, big phone in general. You can see here that we have a decent amount of chin on the bottom, 
and some bezel on the top as well. I believe this is only about an 82.6 screen to body ratio, which is pretty good, but it just means that along with your large screen, you're gonna have that much larger of a phone. We can see here that this A22 opts for the teardrop hole punch cutout design, which honestly, it looks fine to me. It's not the dedicated hole punch that we have on some of the other A-series phones, like the A52, for example. You can see it's its dedicated hole punch cutout there, not part of that top bezel. But with our initial tour of the A22 5G out of the way, I'm gonna go ahead, set this up, put all my personal information and apps into the phone, gonna play around with it for a while, and I'll come back with my first impressions for you guys on the Galaxy A22 5G. All right, so it's actually the next day and I've been using the A22 5G for nearly a day now. So I'm definitely ready to share some of my first impressions with you guys. Starting with the looks and design of this phone. I know we already touched on it at the beginning of this video, but I am really liking the way this phone looks. The little things like the silver rim around the camera module and a very prominent Samsung branding look really clean in my opinion and are a great contrast to the otherwise plain gray color. It's just a nice looking phone overall, and I think Samsung has done a good job updating the design of all of their more affordable A-series phones here in 2021. Regarding the screen now, the 6.6 inch display is definitely one of the most defining features of this phone. If you are not a fan of big phones, then this is definitely not the phone for you. If that's what you're after though, then you're in for a treat. Despite the screen not being AMOLED and instead opting for a TFT display, the 90Hz refresh rate and 1080p resolution screen have been very enjoyable regardless of what I'm doing. It's not a super bright screen, but I am able to see it outside in direct sunlight. And the flat screen design means no accidental touches so far for me. The chin at the bottom is definitely larger than some of the other Samsung phones I've used throughout this year, but when playing games or doing other things, I honestly forgot it was even there. It's not a huge deal if you ask me. Android 11 is on board here alongside Samsung One UI Core 3.1, which is basically just a stripped down version of One UI, which is found on higher end Samsung phones. Most of your core Samsung features are found on this phone though, so no worries on the software side of things. And as far as general performance goes, I'm initially very impressed with this phone's processor, the MediaTek Dimensity 700 5G. Animations and opening and closing of apps is very snappy, and I didn't come across many stutters or jitters when scrolling through social media and surfing the web. The 90Hz screen can definitely be taken advantage of with this processor on board. My initial gaming tests were great, with Call of Duty Mobile giving me no problems at all. The combination of the large screen, good resolution, smooth refresh rate, and good processor is definitely a winning formula for mobile gaming here on the A22 5G. But all of those things I just mentioned seem to be taking a major hit on the battery in my initial testing at least. The A22 5G has a 5,000 milliamp hour battery capacity, which is certainly on the higher end for most most phones out there, but my initial tests definitely took a toll on the battery with one hour and 45 minutes of watching YouTube taking about 25% and 37 minutes of Call of Duty Mobile taking about 10% of the battery. I definitely need to test the battery more and will check back in with you guys on this in my 22 days later review, but just know that some of the things that make this phone better are certainly hitting the battery life. As far as charging goes, the included 15 watt fast charger does does a decent job. In my initial testing, I was able to get around 60% battery back in one hour and got back to nearly a full charge after two hours. On the bottom of the phone, we have the one and only speaker on this phone. This is of course disappointing since we don't have a dual speaker setup, but in the past day or so, I've never been let down by the single speaker. Watching and listening to YouTube was perfectly fine and playing games was also good enough as far as audio is concerned. Here is a sound bit so you can get an idea for the audio.
On the camera side of things, we have a triple lens setup on the A22, including a 48 megapixel primary wide angle lens, a five megapixel ultra wide lens, in addition to a two megapixel depth sensor. The primary lens definitely gave some nice results in my initial testing. There are also preset digital zoom options, which can go up to a 10 times zoom. When zooming out to the ultra wide lens, I can definitely see a loss in image quality, like in this photo, for example. The eight megapixel selfie camera is okay. There's definitely a lot of processing going on with these selfies because I have a lot more freckles on my face than what is actually shown in these selfies. And there is also also a wide angle option on the selfie camera to fit someone else in with you. And on the video side of things, you're able to film up to 2K30, which isn't an option I've ever seen on any other Samsung phone before. And there doesn't seem to be any sort of image stabilization going on here. I will need to test these cameras a bit more before I come to my final conclusions. But initially here, I think the photography side of things is a lot better than the videography side of things. But that is gonna do it for my first impressions here on the A22 5G. First impressions, I'm very impressed with this phone. I'm really enjoying the screen aspect of it, the just interacting with that huge 6.6 .6 inch display. That is a huge aspect of this phone. If you're in the market for a big phone, this is definitely a good consideration. And you also have to consider that you're getting that 5G connectivity. You do have to pay more money for that 5G. So that's probably the main reason why we're not getting an AMOLED display here. But I think the 1080p resolution and the 90 hertz refresh rate and a good processor certainly well make up for that. I'll be back in about 22 days to give my 22 days later full review of this phone, so make sure you're subscribed for that. And let me know what your thoughts are on the Samsung Galaxy A22 5G down in the comments below. And I'll see you guys down there. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.